and uh, I stay in South Africa, mm. I work, mm. and then just before one year was over, mm. I get a call from National Media Group. Hey. And at that point, oh. I started to develop, um, now this connects to my next job mm. in a way. Mm. I started to think around how do we build distribution models mm. for over-the-counter products. Mm. So I started to develop um, ideas around using these bicycle people mm -hmm. to distribute. Because mm. initially it was just pickups and stuff. Mm. I'm like, how do we create models that are more agile? So mm. I, de I developed a whole distribution paper mm. and I gave it to the then general manager, mm. Reynald Gitai. Mm. And we debated it, debated it. Mm. It never saw the light of day. Mm. But I remember us talking a lot about it. Mm. And I'll talk about the relevance of that mm. as we go along. Mm -hmm. So I worked, and in 2006, mm. I was sent to South Africa mm -hmm. by GSK. Mm. So I went to South Africa. They mm. had a big, you know, GSK had a big uh, uh, operation mm. in South Africa. Mm. And I was going to continue with my medical marketing role. Because mm. now I was only the only doctor in the region. Mm. I was going to take over Africa and Middle East mm. for medical marketing, mm. but continue to do my marketing work. One of the most popular products in South Africa for pain is called Grandpa. Grandpa. It's a powder, grandpa. Like, it is like a cult in South Africa. Like grandpa. Grandpa. Oh, it's a powder. A mm. Exactly. Mm. It is a powder. You know this um, foil that mm. people used to use wrapping cigarettes and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's packed in a foil, mm. then rolled, mm. packaged, mm. and then put into a sachet. That that, that just looks like drug abuse. <laughs> 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 it looks like chumbeng. <laughs> exactly. It's called grandpa. Mm. And grandpa is it's a cult in south africa it up to now like, yeah. and actually even the way they take it mm. they would open it and knock it at the back of their throat, throat. because mm. it's obviously bitter mm. but it's it's a movement mm. so i was going out to help mm. with that mm. and continue to help with medical marketing mm. the reason i was actually being sent there mm. because of medical marketing mm. is for exactly the reason you've said mm. it is very amenable to abuse mm. because of this cultic mm. nature of it mm. and therefore mm. and because it's powder mm. you used to have people who take it and mix it with other drugs oh all right okay mm. so there was a big reputation issue around it mm. and there was fear that the government could actually mm. ban it mm. but it's okay. actually paracetamol mm. it was paracetamol with a bit of aspirin <laughs> good formulation Mm. So I was being sent there to manage the mm. environment mm. to ensure that the reputation and credibility is not eroded. Mm. That's why I was going there. Mm. So mm. I worked in South Africa. Mm -hmm. At that point, I was now also starting to have family challenges, mm. you know, mm. with my wife. Mm. There were some challenges happening around the same time. Mm. So mm. I was also having life-changing moments. Yeah. And uh, So she's back in Nairobi. She was, she, no, oh, you, you know, we were her? living here. So I went alone. Oh, you, okay. I went alone, right. but later we agreed and she came back. By this time, mm. we had two daughters, mm. uh, and then she had just gotten our firstborn son. son. So we had three children, okay. and that was, um, uh, my son was born in 2005, mm. now this 2006. Mm. We are having problems around there. Mm. Mm. We've kind of separated, mm. Uh, mm. but we are still together. Then mm. I go, and then they follow me to South Africa. Mm. And uh, I see in South Africa, mm. I work, mm. and then just before one year was over, mm. I get a call from National Media Group. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah? All right. I got a call. A call. From... You yes. know, what's interesting about this is that they are exactly. coming as calls. Yes. So who's who's a, who's calling you at, at, at an MG at this time? Now, this is the relevance mm -hmm. to the story I gave you earlier about mm -hmm. distribution model. Between this period, mm -hmm. my general manager then, Linus Gitahi, has, has left and gone to Nigeria for uh -huh. GSK, uh -huh. as MD of Nigeria mm -hmm. GSK, mm -hmm. has worked there, done an extremely good job. Mm. Nation has transitioned CEO, and mm. they have actually asked him to come back and take over Nation Media Group as CEO after Kiboro. Right, right. Kiboro used to be, I, I worked at Nation some years. Kiboro was my then, uh, 1999 to 2005. So exactly. I was a junior. <laughs> yes, but he was your boss. He, he was, was a he CEO. was a CEO at the time. Exactly. Yeah, I was in radio and TV as, so a, when, as a producer. Exactly. So when Kiboro left GSK, mm. no Nation. Yeah. Two thousand and six. Yeah. Who came in? Linus. Linus. Guitar. Yeah. Where was I? South Africa. Okay. So the call came. So when Linus came, the first yeah. thing he did was restructure 
Nation yeah, Media Group. Definitely. It was a very old structure. Ah, I remember. You remember? Yeah, I remember. Circulation, yeah. this and this. Yeah. So they removed broadcasting, broadcasting circulation and so they combined marketing and circulation yeah. into one department. And they put marketing and circulation across digital across print, yes. all, all of that. And they brought it together under one general manager. Yeah. Who was that? That was me. Oh. So now Linus was calling me from South Africa ah. because now he remembers my Your passion work. for distribution and marketing. And these are, these are I'm different about the distribution sector. Model. Exactly. So now I leave the medical profession completely, ah. the healthcare industry completely, and I leave South Africa after one year and I come back, <laughs> okay? And also, remember I told you I was having family struggles? Yeah. It was now better for me to come back. Right. So I came back. Right. And I joined Nation as general manager for and marketing. And now you're home. You're close to family. I'm home now. Mm. And now I worked at Nation as general manager for marketing and circulation. And From now 2007? 2006. Yeah, six. Seven. Yeah. And, um, uh, no, seven, sorry. Yeah. Because now I came back. So seven. Yeah. Eight, yeah. those two years. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I'll tell you what happened after that. Yeah. During this time now, my role yeah. was vendors, yeah. newspaper vendors. Yeah. I spent a lot of time with newspaper vendors. I would be out in Kitale at 5 a.m. I would oh. wake up with a van so that as so they collect. So you are an on-the-ground kind of manager. You're not, you're no. not, you're not no. sitting behind the desk and having... Even now, I spend my time with community health workers. Yeah. That's the only way you know what really mm. is happening. Mm. So I spent a lot of time mm. with the vendors. Mm designed you know promotions change distribution mm. worked with newspapers mm. i revisited my border border races mm. with the newspapers mm. taifa leo was mm. actually a small paper we mm. tried to grow it mm. we worked a lot mm. on newspapers mm. and then mm. a newspaper was the key product for nation mm. group so mm. that's that was the key pro even radio and tv were just yeah. fringe products the main product is nation yeah so I worked a lot on that. We launched Business Daily. So you're talking a lot about print at this time. Print. Th that's why the circulation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that is the bread and butter. Mm. We started Top 100. So what you see this as Top 100. Yeah. I was actually the one who founded so, together with KPMG. Talk a little about Top 100. Top 100 is this product that Nation has mm -hmm. maintained, mm. where every year through Business Daily, they would identify mm. SMEs, mm. small, medium-sized enterprises. Mm. And they would look at their audited accounts, their mm -hmm. growth, and they would mm -hmm. award the top 100 mm -hmm. uh, medium-sized companies mm -hmm. an award. Mm -hmm. They would have mm -hmm. this annual dinner, mm -hmm. they award them. Mm -hmm. And that kind of became a brand for medium-sized enterprises. You set that up? I set that up oh. together with KPMG. Oh, wow. Yeah, at that point. Oh, wow. So we build up, mm -hmm. um, we build up business daily, mm -hmm. and then somewhere around 20, 2009, mm -hmm. I was asked to go to Uganda. No, uh, the, the the Kenya part before we move to Uganda. Yes, <laughs> the landscape because no, this is this is this is a very interesting part of yeah. your time in yeah. Kenya. Uh, the, you, you're touching on the print and it's 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 fantastic. I just want to hear a little bit more about that, but also you can touch a little also on the on the on, on the broadcast. Yeah, and if there's anything on digital that's yeah. happening around that time, so, anything whatsoever. Yeah, I think mm. that's an important question. So, mm. what was going on at this point? Mm is that we can see that the digital transition is happening. Mm. Okay? Mm. We know. Mm. So we've sat and thought and we've developed decks and mm. all these things to convince mm. the board mm. that the digital transition needs to happen. Mm. But you know, it's knocking on. Like it's, it's knocking. knocking. Google is... Google is yeah. showing. Yeah. Circulation is stagnating. Mm. We can see people are moving. But at that point, the profitability of the newspaper mm. is still extremely Very high. Good. You are the number one paper still. Number one paper. By far. 70, if actually, 70% mm. market share mm. at that point, mm. and read mm. by 90% of the readers. They would say, I read the nation. Yeah. So at that point also, yeah. I started the one out, nine out of 10 campaign, saying nine out of 10 read the nation. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Th that has continued though for yes. a very long exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. That was my campaign that as well. <laughs> and it came from the data of readers. Ah. And we're trying to build the brand. That, that's a very clever thing because, I mean, every time I saw that, because yes. I used to see that, I would think about the kind front of you is always a Toyota. Exactly. You know, like it's just yes. right there. Like nine out of ten readers. Read nine out of it. ten. It, and it, we did it with Canada. And you know, it's a very in your face kind of thing. Like, yes. it just tells the competition, yo, like, do your worst. Exactly. And we would even have a bench with, you know, yeah, uh, like those 10 benches people, and then you have the one streets. odd person. Yeah. Exactly. Ah. But now I'm in the board of Standard Group, so I can't talk too much about this. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> it's your story. It's my story. <laughs> it's your story and it's that time. So <laughs> So but now the standard yeah. has grown and anyway. So yeah. So at that point the nation was also struggling and this is a really important question mm. because I think the persona of the media house mm. is a really critical thing in its business plan. Mm. And the nation had taken this persona of seriousness. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So whatever we tried to do mm. with broadcasting, mm. it really couldn't work. Mm. Because broadcasting is driven more by entertainment mm. than information. Mm. The newspaper is driven more by information than entertainment, mm. if you look at it. Yeah. So the TV and radio mm. would have to have, would need to have more banter, mm. more uncontrolled conversations, mm. Mm. more open conversations like this. Mm. Mm. And the persona of the nation did not allow for that. I, yeah. And you worked there. You I, know. I, I remember Nation FM changed. Yes. So rebranded so many times. Exactly. Nation FM, Easy FM, NFM, yeah. like yeah. so NTV did the same exactly. a number of times. Yeah. Because a lot more than the persona. Any... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. You remember that there was a very popular program around by Shiko Miro called Busted. Yes. It was like Yeah. It was killed. Yeah. Because it doesn't fit yeah, the, the persona, persona of, okay? of NMD. So that is why the broadcasting mm. struggled at mm. the nation. Mm. Okay? That's mm. number one. Mm. Number two, I remember at that point, mm. we had old frequencies. Mm. Um, and uh, my suggestion was, why don't we launch vernacular TV? Mm. We have frequencies. Mm. And I think, you know, I'm a rural boy. Mm. I'm like, you know, there are people who don't watch TV mm. because they can't. My mother can't mm. watch TV, mm. couldn't watch TV mm. because she can't understand what they're saying. Mm. And why don't you launch vernacular? And I'm like, which vernacular will you do? You know, Kenya mm. is, a, mm. is a national country. Mm. You know, you mm. can't choose one versus the other. Mm. I'm like, okay, so why don't you say 7 p.m. Luo, mm. 9 p.m. Kikuyu, mm. 10 p.m. Luya, you know, mm. whatever. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Because again, mm the persona of the mm. station is mm. serious. National, yeah. And actually that persona mm. was the success of the nation. Mm. That's why they had Nation, Business Daily, mm. East African. The That's East African true. was a serious paper. Mm. And anyone wanted to refer to what the media has said, mm. this is what they would look at. So it was their, bra their brand. And, and continues to be. And continues to be. Mm. But now that brand could not be easily translated to radio because then are you now replicating BBC? That's true. You get, do you yeah. replicate BBC? Yeah. And then a Kenyans interested mm. in a local BBC. Mm. Okay. Mm. So that is why the broadcasting struggled. Mm. When you try to bring digital, mm. digital challenge was the investment. Mm. You needed to invest mm. by acquiring a digital company mm. that knows what you're doing because we didn't know digital. Mm. We had attempted, you know, Ian Fernandez yeah, I was the Ian. first director yeah. of digital broadcasting yeah. in a nation. Yeah. Struggling. Yeah. Get trying to work with India experts to yeah. develop a product. Right. But because that's not your persona, mm. breaking through becomes mm. a problem. Mm. So it is struggled. So mm. digital conversations happened, mm. presented multiple times to the board, mm. but the investment needed was never, it was never seen an, as an urgent thing. Mm. And I think all of us across the media industry mm. uh, are now suffering the mm. fact that mm. we did not go ahead of the pack. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We stayed behind. Yeah. And now we're having to chase the pack. Yeah. You yeah. know? Mm. Exactly. If mm. you're a striker, mm. you don't go where the ball is. Yeah. You go where the ball is going. Mm. Mm. Okay? Mm. And we were not strikers. Yeah. And yeah. that's the entire media industry. Yeah. And even now as I sit in the board of the standard, mm. I can see the things we are doing now. Mm. We should have done them. They back should have then. done them back then. Yeah. yeah. So everyone is running. Yeah. Back footed. All right. So that's what was going on. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's yeah. that's a very interesting contextual like analysis of the time then yeah. but you say you were then expanded to uh, monitor so what happened was this mm -hmm. so now uh, the monitor was also going so the nation media group owns a newspaper company in uganda a newspaper company in tanzania mm. and then of course the operations in kenya right. and you have the group right at this point i was operating as general manager at the group level mm -hmm. so overseeing uganda tanzania marketing circulation mm -hmm. and then there was a role as a managing director now for uganda subsidiary mm -hmm. and uh, i was asked to go there mm -hmm. and the then director of uganda mm -hmm. uh, who was tom shindy mm -hmm. was asked to come back to kenya to become the managing director of the newspaper division of kenya oh, okay so we exchanged and i moved now to uganda mm -hmm. And I worked in Uganda now as the managing director for Monitor Publications Limited. 2009. That was 2009. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did that for three years. Mm. And I did 2009, 10, 11. Mm. Now, there's a story in between here. Okay.